Well, the latest figures from the government are now out, and the death toll from the Philippine government side is now closing the gap on what the United Nations announced last week. It's up above 4,000 people, 4,011 now said to have died in Super Typhoon Haiyan, as well as that 4.4 million people internally displaced, 1,602 officially listed as missing. And for the relatives of those people, uh, without confirmation that their loved ones have died, without having any idea where they might be, if by some miracle they're still alive, it's becoming an increasingly depressing and difficult experience. We caught up with one family who are really trying very hard to find a missing three-year-old boy and not really knowing where to turn. They've been in Tacloban for more than a week on an increasingly desperate mission. Carl Wilcoxon and his family are looking for a nephew, three-year-old Tarin. His parents died in the storm surge, but not before they'd strapped him into a life jacket. Carl believes he may have been rescued, but his efforts to find out for sure have been thwarted in the confusion after the disaster. Red Cross, the city social welfare office, um, even the army, uh, the police. We tried going around, but uh, they just keep on passing us around. Uh, go to this place, it might be there, and then when we go there, it's, it's a totally different thing. This is where the missing and the dead are reported to Tacloban's local government, except today it's also where government employees are registering their attendance for work. Jovile Vinyas is trying to discover what happened to her mother's relatives in a nearby province. I haven't found their names yet, so I, I, don't, know, I don't know where to search for. The staff here admit that there's no central system in place to match up the missing with the families seeking them. Right now we don't have. Maybe some other day. The Takloban city government told us that anybody looking for a missing relative would be better served by trying with the Department for Social Welfare Development, the national agency. Their office in town has sent us here to their main aid distribution point where they say there is a comprehensive list of the missing and the dead that can be cross-referenced. But with the pressing need to get aid to the storm survivors, we find that no such list exists. Another priority continues to be recovery and disposal of bodies. The sex, height, clothing and approximate age are noted before they're taken away. Families will have to grieve for loved ones who've simply disappeared. Carl Wilcoxon, meanwhile, has had a lead. Someone rang to say that they had the boy, only to go on to demand money. Another blind alley, but Carl hasn't given up. When he stumbles, he never cries. He just picks him, himself up and then keeps on running again. So with, with these memories in my mind right now, I really do hope that we can, we can still find him. And so the poster campaign goes on. One family in the midst of a national calamity, hoping to find for themselves the answers they need. Well, we've since seen some of the text messages that were sent to Carl Wilcoxon by this person who said that he had young Tarin. Uh, he was saying he was from a, a communist armed group in this area and that he was demanding a revolutionary tax for the return of this young boy. The family immediately decided that this was a hoax, just some kind of money-making venture. But it shows how some people can be taken advantage of in this situation and the UN is worried more widely about the, the huge number of people now leaving places like Tacloban, 4.4 uh, million by the government's estimation and they've set up the UN a, uh, a task force inside the, the airport here in Tacloban uh, to try and trace people to make sure that they give their details and that all of these people on the move uh, have some way of being traced in the future because they're worried about some of them falling into the hands of human traffickers.